What's up, fight fans? We are live. I'm with the last samurai, Louis Mocha, out there, live and direct from Oahu, Hawaii. Uh, man, you you hit me up. This is this is rare to hear you and as excited and amped and a little bit angry. It, it, you're usually a really laid back, just chilling out kind of dude. And you hit me up actually wanting to chat about this uh, little beef you got going with Neil Siri. How did it start? And tell us uh, all about it. Um, well, basically, there was a website or, like, a Twitter account that said that we should fight each other, and I'm always ready to fight, so I put that I was game, and he put he wanted to fight, too, and he told me to stand and bang, and I kind of got offended by that. I was like, it's MMA, bro. I'll fight you wherever I feel like fighting you. You don't tell me what to do, and, you know, it just escalated from there. He was calling he was calling me a bitch, and I was telling him, I, was, I called him a leprechaun, man. We were getting into it, dude. Like, shit got real. There's people out there still still going at it on our Twitter, dude, uh, on, on the timeline. So what was the first tweet, like, back and forth? I mean, how did, how did it first get going? Um, it, it literally was, oh, Neil Siri and Louis Smoker have both said they would fight each other. How come this fight hasn't happened? I said, I'm down. Let's do it. He said, stand and bang. I said, it's MMA. I'll fight you where I want. And he's, and then he, he said, oh, how come you're scared to stand? Are you a bitch? And I was like, how come you're scared to grapple? Are you a bitch? And we just kept going from there. Um, I'm actually pretty heated about it. He can't be saying stuff like that. He can't be running around acting like Ireland's a shit now. And, you know, you're not going to back up your words and talk shit to me, you know. I'm ready to beat this kid's ass. Let's do or We'll beat this old man's ass. He's not even a kid. He's an old man. Um, do you feel like that's, you know, I mean, the fight that perfectly makes sense too? I mean, and something you're welcoming, obviously, uh, here at this point. Um, I think it's a good fight um, just because, you know, he's from Ireland. They've got a lot of hype behind them. I'm from Hawaii. We've got a new team. We've got a lot of hype behind us. We're both coming off big wins, you know. I think it'd be a great fight. You know, I'm willing to go to – I'm willing to go fight him in Europe. I know there's um, a card in April or something in Poland. I'm, I'm willing to go out there and fight him. I don't know what I'll eat. I don't know what the weather will be like. I'll still go out there and smash him. Um, do you feel like uh... – you know, I know you're not. You're you like to strike anyway. As as good as you are of a grappler, I mean, you don't feel like anyway. That's you know, obviously, like you said, it's MMA, but not that you have any disadvantage in this fight. Oh, I I I feel like I could take him out striking if I felt like it. But you know, I feel like him trying to tell me how I have to fight him and play his strength is he's not going to get into my head like that. You know, it's MMA. If I want to wrestle you and GSP you, I can do that. If I want to submit you. I can do that, you know, if I want to take it to the ground, I can. If I want to strike and make it to a boxing or kickboxing match, I can. But he's not going to tell me what to do. He doesn't own me. He doesn't He doesn't get the right to tell me how I fight. Of course. Um, when, I mean, when is ideally this fight happening for you? Now, you've been training for a while now. I mean, you've been in the swing of, of things pretty seriously. I mean, waiting for, for the call, right? Yeah, I'm just waiting, you know, and I, I know he just fought, so I'm not going to try and rush him rush him back anything and, you know, give him an excuse to be like, oh, well, I had to come back too fast, I get to recover. You know, you can take his time to recover. I'll, I'll fight him whenever he wants to fight. Let's do this, you know. But ideally, I would say April. It's like three or it's like three or four months recovery for him, you know. Like, I, I, don't, I don't see the problem with setting it up in April. Let's do it. That's no problem for you to wait that long? Seems like a little no, bit of a while. Um, I mean, it is a little bit of a layoff, but if he agrees to it, I'll take it. Um, I, I'd ideally rather not wait that long. I'll fight him whenever, but, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to be fair to him and not try and take any, like, you know, I, I want to beat him fair and square, you know. I, I'm not trying to, you know, get any unfair advantage out of this. I'll let you rest, you know. What do you think about the current state of, of the flyweight division right now? There's It's kind of up in the air oh, where, where these man. contenders are going. Oh, Lineker missing weight all the time. Demetrius Johnson's beat everyone in the top five well, at least once, I think. Like, it's a mess. You know, it's wide open. It's right out there. You know, a couple big wins. I'm hoping to maybe get a crack at Demetrius Johnson. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but it might. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty open right now. I mean, you've got the uh, the, the boxer, Henry Sahuda. uh Hudo, he's, he's the Olympian, actually an yeah. Olympian. Well, Olympian the wrestler, and he has a boxing background. He, he impressed with his boxing, which surprised me he didn't even shoot for a takedown. What do you, what do you think about that guy? 
Yeah, he actually fought um, Dustin Kimura, my teammate. Um, I'm down to fight Henry Seudo too. If we, if he wants to get it, let's do it. I'm not. Well, I'm not worried. I'm willing to. I'm willing to. I'm willing to do whatever. You know, if he wants to fight, I'm not saying I'll fight him striking. I'm not saying I'll fight him on the ground, but I'll fight him. Yep. Um, after going overseas and and doing a fight like you did, you, you don't have any problem. You know, wanting to do that again. What was the experience like? It's pretty fun, you know, like you get to go into some guy's hometown and, you know, like take them out in front of their hometown fans. I mean, you do feel a little bit bad about it, but like at the end of the day, it's like it's like achieving something that's like supposed to be impossible, you know. It's like it's like almost legendary. Like you went into this guy's hometown, beat him on his home turf. It's a pretty like amazing feeling. It's pretty, you feel pretty pretty legendary. Pretty Rumble Johnson like. <laughs> pretty pretty animal. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the training. You guys got new mats, man. Everything's looking pretty sweet over there. I know uh, Ryland's getting getting mad at people wearing dirty geese on the on the mats. Oh uh, yeah, we had a little incident with that. Um, some dude kind of got our new white mats all dirty. Um, hopefully we'll figure out a way to clean that up though. That's not too big a deal. Yeah. It's um, the Really, really nice though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Looks awesome, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, really. Nice. Yeah. Well, how are the other guys doing? I mean, we know Max. Max has a fight. You know, he's probably he's been real busy. Yancey as well, right? Already scheduled. Yeah, Max and Yancey are both scheduled. Max actually just left. He's headed to Denver. Um, he's headed out there a little bit early to try get um acclimated to the to that to the elevation. And um, Yancey is um, he's getting who is he fighting again? He's fighting. Oh, he's fighting oh, a good one in L.A. Yeah, it's a good fight. I, I, I'm pulling for Yancey this one. I don't know. I, I I feel like Yancey just has more tools. Without you, you know, not giving too much away. I feel like Yancey has more ways to win. I, I'm, I'm, they're I'm both, really they're both good at, at everywhere. You know, they're both love. They both invite the grappling. You know, they have great chokes, long arms, and great chokes. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a, they, they, stand up. Yeah, they they both do, but um, uh, I I I without giving too much away, um, I I I'm just it's Hawaii, bro. We're going for the Hawaii boys. I'm going yeah, of course. Of course. I know you are, no doubt about that, man. Um, I'm just excited to see that one. You know, for me, you know, uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. That fun. car is a little less of a damper on it, but that's one fight I'm very much looking forward to. Should be a great fight. They're both on the rise too. Both coming off big wins. They're both been, been on hot streaks. It should be a great fight. Definitely. Um, well, cool. I mean, what? Well, I guess we have to touch on it, man. Today we heard uh, about the the positive drug test today. What are your thoughts on uh, on hearing that uh, Anderson Silva did he taint his legacy here with this uh, steroid test? Nick, it's nothing new. With Nick, I don't I don't think that's much of a big deal to anybody. You know what I mean? It just it's more the Anderson shot. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, to hear to hear about Anderson actually testing positive, I didn't even believe it. I didn't even know what he was testing positive for. But um, I I don't know. I can't believe it. I, I mean, coming back from the loss. Oh, two steroids. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. But um, I don't know, man. Just I guess he must have been a little worried, you know, losing the way he did with that leg injury. I mean, that would have messed with me mentally. Maybe he felt he needed the competitive edge. I'm not sure. I'm not the guy, but I feel like I feel like he really shouldn't have done that. That's just not champion caliber. It's not champion material. I, I don't I don't agree with it. You feel like he tainted his legacy with this? I, I, I feel he did a little bit because it brings a lot of other things into question, too. Was he on steroids the whole time? It brings so much into question. It's just unnecessary. If I had to guess, uh, you know, pure speculation here, the the defense is going to come out that you know, doctors were giving him things and he was unaware, and uh, you know, that's going to be the defense mechanism. If I had to guess, that's going to come out. Um, my biggest issue with this is the athletic commission and how it's done. How does Nick's test come back three days after the fight for for marijuana? A uh, post Competition tests uh, takes three plus weeks and only comes out three days conveniently after the fight, and um, it's just it's just an, an odd thing. And I mean, we all know that the obvious answer is money talks, uh, and a lot of money would be down the drain for the commission for the UFC 
if this was to come out sooner. Um, what, what do you think about that? I mean, what, what should the commission be doing to make these changes? Mm, honestly, no, no. I would say year-round drug testing. But, like, scheduled year-round drug testing, not just random stuff. I feel like we should, we, we as fighters should be told, okay, you're going to be drug tested at these certain amounts of times for roids or PEDS or EPO or whatever it is that you're doing. And, like, maybe four to, like, six times a year. That way, like, I, I'm pretty sure it's, bro, I honestly don't really know how steroids or any of that really even works. But I would assume that it would be a little bit harder to get, like, a full cycle of steroids in if you were being tested every few months, you know what I mean? Like, even even if you knew you were going to be tested, it would be harder to to, to do. But I, I, I don't know. It's not something I put a lot of thought into. Um, can, what can you tell us about maybe at all how you have been tested for your UFC fights? Oh, um, I've just been tested right before the fight. Um, maybe, like... Right before you start warming up, um, they just have you go in the back and pee. That somebody watches you pee in a cup, you give them the cup. They follow you around, make sure you're not ingesting anything um, illegal. They they get, provide you with like um like fruits and bananas and things like that. There's like waters and things back there for you, so you know you're you're ready to go. And that that's all it really is. They just make sure you, they watch you after you pee, and yeah. And um, what? Have you seen, if you can comment on it, if you prefer not to, that's fine, in terms of PEDs in your experience uh, in the sport? Um, I have no experience with PEDs in the sport. I have, like, yeah, I have you no seen guys, though? Do you guys talk about things? I mean, how, how oh, prevalent do you think it is? Oh, um, I have no idea, honestly, at our camp. I don't think... I don't know of anybody on PEDS. I don't know of anyone using a, out of our camp, but I, I can't, can't speak for everyone else. I mean, I've heard some real high numbers out there, people using, like, like, like ridiculous numbers. I don't know. Um, I, I really people don't. People speculate it's, like, 90%. I don't think it's quite that high, but it's, like, you know, I mean, it's it's at this uh, point, it's, a, it's an issue. Yeah, it, it, it really is. Um, something needs to be done about it. I think it's a lot more prevalent probably at the lower levels. Like they say, like, you know, like a lot of like um, probably at the regional shows is probably a lot more prevalent than in the at the upper leagues because I feel like honestly um, the steroids probably wouldn't make up for that much of the talent because in MMA, like even if you roid out, like you're going to gain size, so that's not really what, that's not going to help a lot in our sport to, to put on muscle mass like that. I mean, it does, but it's, it's still going to hurt you because you have to cut the weight too. Sure. I mean, of course, there are certain ones, uh, I, I understand that, you know, will cut your, help you cut weight and will help you keep your weight down while building lean muscle and, uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't know exactly what you're putting with what and how it's going, you know what I mean? And, I think the main thing with people for guys is, is, of course, recovery time. I mean, when you're in the gym, and that has to be a big difference. If you're able to train harder, recover better, just feel better in general, then you're able to train harder. If you're able to train harder, your cardio is better, you know, things like that. So Which it's is definitely an issue. Mandatory. Let's make it mandatory. Even the playing field, peds, everybody's just on peds. We're just, we're even the playing field. <laughs> and, and I think that maybe if, if penalties were stiffer, you know, if if you if you get popped once, maybe it's a full year, because right now six months. I mean, by the time you get a fight scheduled, you know, by the time you recover from a fight, you get a fight scheduled. Really, what are you out? You're only you're only actually sitting an extra two, what, three months, depending on who you are. If you're a top guy, you're you're fighting two max three times a year anyway. Yeah. This doesn't really affect you first for for your first time offense anyway. So it's it's just an interesting you know topic. The NFL, I always say, actually has a little bit for first offenses is less of a, of a penalty. It's like four games. Yeah. And it's a game season, not counting the postseason, then that's a quarter of a year. So if you were to put that in MMA, you know, what are you looking at? You know, maybe, I guess, about four months, six months, maybe the same, depending on how many times you're fighting, you know, so. Yeah. But it's an interesting topic, and, and I definitely have some questions for the Athletic Commission, but hopefully we can yeah, get this, yeah. this board figured out. That. Uh, yeah. I wanna, what I want to hear is um, is really um, 
I, I don't I want to know why John Jones can get away with doing cocaine. Well, I mean, I guess I can kind of understand why he can get away with it and not um because it's it's like it's like a recreational drug, but like there's like all these like classifications that come into it and it gets so complicated with all these different like with all these different like classes of drugs and all these substances people are putting in their body. It's just it's a lot. I mean, we can, at what we point? Can bet that the athletic commission is going to change. Uh, the situation a little bit after this happened. Um, they're, they're already looking into it, but it's funny. When I watch the Athletic Commission, it's like it's you watch and you're like, whatever gets done. I mean, because, okay, we're going to put it off to next month, and the next month is late February. It's the same thing with Cisco's appeal. They put it off to late February. It's like the poor guy has to wait another month and a half, and now already, okay, your IFA was fighting uh, uh, and Sunset, who now got hurt, and now they're look, scrambling for an opponent. I mean, I don't know why they don't just put Cisco back in there if his hand's going to be ready. But anyway, that's another story. The point is the commission doesn't, doesn't you know, it seems like nothing's ever getting done there. And I understand that everything is sort of a process, but it's like if you're not coming into a meeting prepared and having done your due diligence, how do they ever get anything done? And it was really frustrating for me to watch that meeting uh, last month uh, following the John Jones, you know, when they were talking about that topic and the cocaine and everything. But uh, to answer your question about how he was allowed to do that. He it was an out of competition drug test that he shouldn't have been tested for coke. That shouldn't have been. So he's probably going to have a, a lawsuit against the Nevada State Athletic Commission for letting that become public when he wasn't supposed to be tested for it in the first place. They screwed up. So it's this weird, yeah, right. I mean, it's like what the heck. So it's the same reason why if, if Nick Diaz was tested prior to this fight, which another question that I have for the Athletic Commission was he tested. He wasn't. He he wouldn't have been tested for marijuana. Yeah, he would have only been tested for PEDs, which you know, highly unlikely that Nick has ever done PEDs. So anyway, uh, yeah. So it's just like there is that 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 issue, and and what's you know another issue is should marijuana even be a banned substance in competition, much less out of competition? Probably not. I'm sure you'll agree with me out there in Hawaii. A lot of guys like to puff the magic dragon out that way. Uh, John I Ross. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it, it, it. It's pretty prevalent out here, man. Sure. I mean, hey, you know, I mean, guys can't go. What do guys do after practice? They want. They want to relax. They want to. They want to eat some decent food. They want to play some video games. You're not going to be out drinking. That's for sure. Speak for yourself, bro. <laughs> That doesn't work, but but yeah, man. I mean, all this stuff's real interesting to to just touch on, but you know, yeah. I'm interested to talk with the commission. Yeah. Um. One of the things that I was wondering. Um. Sorry to backtrack on it, but like, is what is their um the commission's like qualifications? Like, what do you have to do to become a commission member? Like, how hard is it? Because some of these things I'm looking at, and I'm like. Like, like, what are the actual qualifications to be a commission member? I'm pretty sure, like, right now, it's kind of like, it, like, I feel like, like, the commission and the governing bodies of MMA, because the sport is so new, there's going to be a lot of holes and a lot of, like, gaps and things, and you are right, like, like they got to, like, step it up, and, like, they got to, like, try and patch these holes quicker, but, I mean, there are going to be the holes, inevitably, they're, they're just, there will be issues with it, but... I feel like as we get older and we have more and more like qualified people who are veterans of the sport, the, it, it'll kind of naturally like, um, how can I say this? It'll naturally sort of like will we'll patch itself. The the um the flow of things will become more um more even. I guess I, I don't really know. A lot of people have law backgrounds, you know, and things like that, or some sort of um, you know, ties to 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 government or. Uh, or jobs or things like that. I, I, I know you know there was, and, and yeah, another, like, like you're saying, you you want you want people the sport will be the ones that will will, will ultimately make it better. It will, it will be the better. Judging. I mean, judging is the one that I really think. Like you're saying, we need people who are veterans of the sport who who know what they're doing, who have been in there. But then you also run into this weird, this weird double edged double standard where we're like. What about people who get in there and they have alliances or they have friends, right, who they've made over the years that are, like, good friends? So you almost – it's like, yeah, you want those people in there who are knowledgeable, 
but you also end up having this clash of like, oh, he's friends with this fighter, he can't judge that fight. So you're like, oh. I, I I thought of a really interesting scenario where maybe you'd have you have like basically three disciplines in MM or um in an MMA fight. You're gonna have the striking discipline, the damage. You're gonna have the control aspect, and then you're gonna have the submission or the near finish aspect, like like a submission. So if you have like like the, my issue with the judging is they they tend to go back and forth between what they're grading higher. You should have three consistent judges who you know like this is what they're gonna base off of. This guy's gonna base wrestling. This guy's gonna base striking, or or this guy's gonna score wrestling. This guy's gonna score striking. This guy's gonna score jujitsu, and those that like they're they're committed that this is what they will score and if you can sway these judges that's how you know you definitively won the round i, I mean it, it, it's just it's it's kind of a rough draft it obviously needs to be worked on but i thought that might be like an interesting idea you know yeah i mean if you have people coming from certain backgrounds i mean obviously those people are still going to be versed in, in an mma and still have know what a what a 10 9 round you know is in terms of of striking but yeah i mean it's We've seen some really poor judging lately, and seeing guys' careers just like get dramatically changed, their bank accounts get dramatically changed. It's it's just really coming hitting its head, man. It's frustrating me like like nothing other. I mean, Boston was terrible. It was uh, that was just unreal. And uh, yeah, something has to be done. I mean, there needs to be accountability for these for these judges. So, well, we're getting into some heavy stuff here at this point, but. I mean, back to uh, to to the Neil Siri situation, man. I mean, give us a close out here, I guess. What's going to go down? I mean, this is a fight that you obviously are are definitely waiting for and and wanting to make happen. So, give us the pitch and give us a breakdown and how it's going to go down when it does. Neil Siri, you told me to stand and bang. I will beat you how I choose to beat you, you old man. All right, let me know when you want to set this up. Sean Shelby, Dana White, I'm down. I'm willing to let you wait until April 11th because it will be in Europe, which is basically your hometown because no one out there knows who I am. So I will go to Europe, and I will beat you. That's my closeout. There you have it. You heard it from the last samurai right here at MMA Interviews. He is out. <laughs>